Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Stuff Look Good in Unity. This case study will be a bit different than others because instead of focusing on just one game, I want to dive into an effect that appears in many games. A lot of stealth games feature a similar x-ray vision ability, wherein targets can be identified and highlighted through walls. The appearance of the effect and its implementation no doubt vary from game to game. I've cherry-picked my favorite elements and recreated them in Unity, namely the glowing edges of a mesh that are visible through walls and other objects. Let's start with how the edge glow effect was achieved before we get into the see-through walls. First, we need a quick rundown on normals and lighting. Normals are bits of mesh data passed along with every vertex. While a vertex provides position information, a normal gives us directional information. Normals are typically pointed outward from the surface of the mesh and are used for lighting calculations. If we return the normals as colors in the fragment shader, we get something like this. The normals we see here are in object space, but we'll typically want them in world space. Unity provides a handy helper function to do this, though internally it's just performing this matrix multiplication and normalizing the result. Visualizing the world space normals, we see they return the same value regardless of the object's rotation. We can use this world space normal in combination with a global lighting direction to calculate a simple directional light. The dot product of our world space normal with the direction of the light will give us a value between negative 1 and 1. This value is typically clamped between 0 and 1 to avoid returning negative values of illumination. This value, n.l, can be multiplied against the object's color or the texture sample to illuminate the object. Simply returning the value n.l from a frag function creates basic white lighting. Now that we've covered the basics on lighting, let's look at highlighting the edges of the mesh. If instead of the global lighting direction in our dot product, we use the world space direction from the camera to the vertex, what would it look like? We'll calculate a normalized vector from the main camera's position to the world space position for each vertex. Then in our fragment shader, we'll take the dot product of our normal with our view direction and call this n.v. Returning n.v, it looks as if there is a light source positioned at the camera that always points to the object. In fact, if we set up our scene to do exactly that with the basic lighting from earlier, the effect would look nearly identical. To illuminate the edges, we can just invert the result of the dot product. From there, multiplying our n.v by a value greater than 1 will give us a more pronounced edge. Let's preview the effect so far on a more complex model. On the left, we have the textured model, and on the right, our shader so far. We want our outline to render nicely over top of other objects in the scene, so let's give it additive blending with Z-Test always. Now that we have a shader that renders outlines on top of other objects, let's set things up to render our character twice with two different shaders. We'll use a second camera using a replacement shader to achieve this. Check out Shaders 103 for an overview on using replacement shaders. Now in my scene, I want the character to be highlighted when there's geometry blocking him. I also want the character to be able to use the built-in standard shader. To do this, I've downloaded the built-in shaders from the Unity download archive so I can make some edits. I'll add the X-Ray colored outline tag to the tags list. I'll also add this tag to the X-Ray shader itself. This is just to get the replacement shader working nicely. I also tack on an additional color property we can use to tint the outline. Now the standard shader actually uses a custom inspector, so we'll need to grab the editor script which is packaged with the built-in shader downloads and add some code to expose the new color property. Our second camera can now easily replace anything using the modified standard x-ray shader with the x-ray outline shader. This second camera will have its clear flag set to don't clear and should have a depth value greater than the main camera so that it renders on top. In a short script, we'll have the camera set its replacement shader. And just like that, our character will be rendered again with a glowing outline. We can see our character through walls, but we don't really want to see the outline on top of our character when he's in plain sight, so let's deal with that now. This is a good example of when you might use the stencil buffer. While the depth buffer is used to cull pixels based on whether they are in front of or behind another object, the stencil buffer provides a general purpose buffer, which can be used to mask pixels. In our shader, stencil operations are simple pass-fail checks with limited arguments. For example, in our x-ray shader, we'll make the reference value 0 and the pass condition not equal. Because the stencil buffer is zeroed out at the beginning of each frame, and nothing else is writing to it, the stencil test always fails. For this scene, I edited versions of the legacy diffuse and bump map shaders to add this bit of stencil code. This gives fragments a reference value of 1, they'll always pass the stencil test, and when they do, they'll replace whatever's currently in the buffer with the reference value 1. 
So now our x-ray shader, which is comparing against the stencil buffer for not equal to zero, will pass the stencil test and won't be discarded when it's blocked by objects. You might be wondering why the test isn't passing when other scene geometry is behind our character. There's actually a parameter called zfail we can define as well. This determines what we do when the stencil test passes, but the depth test fails. When left out, it has a default value of keep, meaning we keep whatever value is in the stencil buffer. If we define zfail with the replace operation, now we'd see the outline appear whenever any geometry overlaps our character, regardless of whether it's behind or in front. For this effect, we'll leave zfail alone. So now our character's glowing edges are visible through walls. That covers the core aspects of the effect, but before we wrap up, let's look at how you might stylize the effect a bit and use it in your game. Here, I've taken the x-ray version of the standard shader off of the main character, and instead applied it to several enemies that are hidden in the area. The enemies have a red outline, but you'll notice that we can't see them through walls all the time. I've bundled several image effects together that can be eased on or off. As well, I'm using shader.setGlobalFloat to set a variable called global x-ray visibility in the x-ray outline shader. This global visibility is being multiplied against the return value, and since the shader is using additive blending, a value of 0 means outlines are hidden, and a value of 1 indicates maximum visibility. Most of the effects here are standard image effects like desaturation, bloom, and vignetting, though I've also written a custom blurry distortion. I also move the camera towards the player while simultaneously increasing the field of view to give that perspective distortion effect. There are many ways you could stylize this effect, these are just a couple of ideas you can use. And of course, giving the player the ability to see enemies through walls is a major gameplay decision, but if you're going to do it, you may as well do it in style. I'll link the shaders and some demos in the description. And that does it for this video. I know my release schedule has been pretty wild, but I'll leave you with this teaser from my next video. It covers a game whose name rhymes with, um, Grover Crotch. Shout out to all of my patrons, your support has been just phenomenal. And as always, thank you all for watching, keep on making those video games.